Hey guys, so uh, first of all, sorry there wasn't a video last week. With everything happening with my family, I just wasn't feeling up to it, but I'm back now. Um, and we're going to talk about Piccolo today. So I've talked about Piccolo in the past, probably about a year and a half ago now, um, but I thought we'd talk about it again, and yeah. So, uh, I mean, most of you guys probably know things about Piccolo, but I thought I would just go over the basics so that we have everything covered. Um, so the range of the Piccolo is from D5 to the stupidly high C. Um, the parts are going to be written in the same octave as flute, but the Piccolo speaks an octave higher. So um, the parts are going to be the same as flute parts in terms of what you're looking at, but they're going to speak an octave higher. So they're going to be pretty high. <laughs> um, the highest note you're going to encounter is the C most of the time, but as proven by my experience last semester, you can be asked to play higher. It's kind of unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are three major types of piccolos, metal, plastic, and wood. Metal is primarily a marching instrument. I would really never suggest bringing a metal piccolo into a concert setting. Um, most manufacturers aren't making them anymore, so you're gonna chances are you're gonna find them secondhand. Uh, and within metal piccolos, you can get C piccolos and D flat piccolos. D flat piccolos are an older f model, basically. Um, they were developed mainly for military bands and for things like Sousa's band, which is why some of those really old marches that we all have to play have D flat parts as well as C piccolo parts. Um, it facilitates the high notes a little bit more, but the instrument has its own issues, and they really aren't made anymore, so they're not worth it. They're kind of cool, but it's not worth the investment over a functional C piccolo. <laughs> um, plastic piccolos are kind of an interesting in-between. You can get metal or plastic head joints, um... And sometimes that's a nice in-between because piccolo can be hard with the lack of lip plate. Um, but in all, I don't think they're that great. They don't sound that great. But in terms of price, they're pretty great. Um, in between plastic and wood, you have composite. Um, the most notable brand of those is Pearl. Um, those piccolos are really, truly fantastic. Um, they're really high quality, and if you're looking for a piccolo under about $1,500 that's going to really be a good instrument that you can play in almost any setting, I would suggest the Pearl, look at the Pearl piccolos. Um, what they do is take wood shavings and resin and combine them so you get most of the sound of a wood piccolo, but without the price point. <laughs> Um, and they kind of, they refer to that wood as granodite. Um, and then you have wood piccolos. Majority of wood piccolos are going to be made out of grenadilla wood, which is how you get granodite. Um, it's the same black wood that they use for most of the wood woodwinds. Um, but places, or makers like, uh, Powell and I think Nagahara uses a different wood. And then the Sonari piccolos are made of different woods. Um, Powell uses King's wood, I think, and American hardwood. Um, and that all changes the sound, obviously. Um, in terms of top brands for piccolos, I would say Keefe, Hammig, Burkhart, and probably Powell. But then there's also a ton of offshoots of those. Um, Boston Global, things like that. Rizona. Um... And then Yamaha as well, and I personally play Yamaha and I love it. So, um, that's a matter of preference, as are flutes, and that's all that, that's all good. Um, so, my whole thing about piccolo is that the reality of the music world is that all of us who want to be professional flutists need piccolo proficiency. It doesn't have to be your favorite thing, it doesn't have to be your best thing, but you have to be able to play it passably you are going to get parts that have piccolo in them. Even if you're principal flute of an orchestra, you are going to have to play piccolo. And the reality is that orchestras are changing, and there's a lot more freelancing and a lot more contemporary collaboration and things like that, and you're going to need piccolo for that. So being as flexible as possible and having as much mastery on the instrument is really important 
like it's been important for a long time, but it's really, really important now. Um, I think a lot of people are kind of afraid of Piccolo. It has a bit of a stigma because it's so high and a lot of people don't like it because it's so high. But the reality is, if you play it well, Piccolo is a great instrument. Um, I really love it. Um, never practice without earplugs. It's not worth losing your hearing over it. Um, you can get musicians earplugs or like you can get them custom made for your ears. You can get um, decent ones off Amazon for like 25-30 bucks that'll last you more than like the drugstore ones will. But if you don't have that kind of money, the pack of like 30 foam earplugs is better than nothing. Um, you don't have to wear them in both ears, though that's kind of suggested, especially if you're in a small space. Um, I don't even play in an ensemble without earplugs, um, because it's just so high and the, like, it's so close to your face. And I think that's one of the things that people never realize is that although piccolo is unfortunate for the people sitting next to you, the person who is most affected by the piccolo is the piccolo player themselves, because your sound production is right here. Um... And so, don't risk your hearing, wear your plugs. Just do it. Um, so, piccolo, each piccolo has its own personality. And I mean, that's true with flutes, but the smaller instruments somehow have even more. Um, and so I really recommend either making sure you have the same instrument for a full year, or buying your own. Um, because that way you can really get used to it and really have a good grasp on what it's going to do <laughs> and what you can expect it to do. Um, I know that's hard sometimes and I know that having the money to get instruments isn't always possible. So if that's not, if that's the case, um, try to borrow one for a full year or hopefully your teacher or your school will have some and try to make sure that you stay consistent on that because that way you have actual consistent practice on an instrument. Um, what, what I really suggest when you first get a piccolo is to go through chromatic scales with a tuner, um, figure out where things lie naturally, and then figure out how much it takes to adjust them. Because um, chances are you're going to have to be tuning all the time. And if you know where your instrument lies naturally, you can guess which direction you're going to have to go. You're going to figure out if you're the one who's wrong. <laughs> Um, because that's when the, the fun thing is when you're dead on, but the rest of the ensemble isn't, you're gonna still sound wrong, and it's your job to switch, but you have to know that. So, working with a tuner is super, super, super important. Um, and I think one of the reasons that I got so comfortable with piccolo so quickly is because I just played it all the time. I played it in marching band where I could play as loud as I could and didn't have anyone yelling at me so I could figure out what my instrument did, what I needed to do to get those high notes out, um, how I could control those high notes, um, and so I got a chance to actually test everything. Um, so why not give yourself the same chance? Play it a lot. Um, I suggest having separate set practice sessions for piccolo just to prevent flute and piccolo embouchure issues because it is a different embouchure and it will take some trial. Um, and I know that basically every professional will suggest that you put piccolo at the end of your practice session so that way you're not tiring out your face and then going back to something else because um, it is hard work. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, there's so many things I can talk about, and if you have specific questions, let me know. But basically, Piccolo is your friend, and you shouldn't be afraid of it. You should just try it. It's great. I love Piccolo, and I think that you will too once you get better at it. <laughs> um, and until then, just apologize profusely to the people sitting next to you. <laughs> Um, I hope you guys have a great week. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you have specific video ideas, let me know. Anything like that. And I will see you next week.